What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to automate your expense reports using Python. All right, so let's get over to our Jupyter Notebook. In essence, the steps to set up this automation will be to create an account on the MindD website platform. So what is MindD? The MindD platform makes available APIs in Python where you can do all sorts of things like, for example, automate data extraction from expense receipts. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this API from MindD to automate extracting data from expense receipts. So we're going to have an image of an expense receipt and we're going to automate the process of extracting all the information from that receipt and putting all of that into a table using Python. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create an account on the MindD website platform. So I already did that, but I will leave a link in the description for the platform. The basic idea is that they have a free version where they make available 250 credits that you can use for anything during a month. Uh, the second step will be to set up an API key. So this part is pretty easy. You're going to come to the website, you're going to create a new API. And when you do create a new API, you can select this API called expense receipt. What that will allow you to do is have access to an API key, which you're going to use to make requests to that API and automate part of the process of extracting the data and the information from images of expense receipts. Then after you did that, we're going to go ahead and install the MindD package. You can just use pip install MindD. So we can just run pip install MindD directly on Jupyter Notebook like this. Boom. Now I'm installing the MindD package. Now that we have installed the MindD package, what we're going to do is we are going to import our dependencies. For this project, we're going to install pandas. Uh, we're going to install maplalib. And we are going to install seaborn, which I like because, you know, it makes maplalib plots a little bit more, you know, aesthetically pleasing. So once we've done that, all we have to do now is import all, dependence, all the dependencies that we're going to use for this project. So basically, I'm going to use the client class and the documents method and the documents module from the uh, MindD package. I'm going to use random to generate some random data for testing the helper functions I'm going to write. I'm going to import pandas to create the table. I'm going to use the glob package to uh, go fetch some paths from the folder with the images of the receipts. I'm also going to use maplalib and seaborn so that I can visualize the expense receipts with the data that I extracted from them at the end of the process so that I can do a kind of like a sanity check to make sure that uh, all the data that I extracted makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and import these dependencies. So now we're going to write some helper functions. Now we're going to write three helper functions. The first one is going to be called extract expenses data, which is going to take the API response from the MindD client request. And it's going to output the extracted information that I want from that API response. I just want five things from that API response. So what I want is I want date. So I want the date when the, uh, the receipt was generated. I want the category, like the type of um, the type of receipt that we're talking about. So it could be like uh, food or transport or anything like that. Um, also, the time when the receipt was generated. So the time when the receipt was was generated, as well as the total amount of the receipt. And finally, the file name for the image, just so that I'm organized about everything. And I'm going to return that. And I'm going to return that in a function. So I'm going to return date, amount, um, file name, category, and time. Okay, perfect. Okay. So this is my first function. The second function I'm going to write, it's going to be to convert time to meal type. Now, this function, I'm going to use this function so that when I get a time, so when I get the time of the receipt, like for example, 1230 p.m., I know that that was for lunch. And when I get at 830 p.m., I know that that was for dinner. And that's important because in my specific use case, I need to have the information about uh, what kind of uh, what kind of meal that receipt was generated for. 
So it can be, in my case, it can be lunch or dinner. So that's pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna set up thresholds because, uh, you know, sometimes people have, you know, late lunches or whatever, but I'm gonna set up, you know, 5 p.m. as the threshold where before 5 p.m. it was lunch and after 5 p.m. it was dinner and also a, an hour minimum because, for example, if I have dinner at, you know, midnight five or like, you know, 12.05 in the evening, uh, that's a dinner, not a lunch, obviously. So anything that I, you know, any meal after six, actually that could be, you know, that could be eight or something like that, will be considered, um, will be considered lunch, right? Perfect. And now the, the function is relatively simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna get the hour digits. So I'm gonna get the first two digits from the, uh, so I'm gonna get the first two digits from the string with the time, which is gonna be something like, you know, 13, 25. So what I'm getting is the 13, right? And then I'm gonna set up an if where, you know, if our digits, is bigger than our max and our digits is bigger than our minimum, actually smaller than uh, our max and bigger than, I'll return uh, lunch. Yeah, so I'll say meal type equals lunch. Else meal type equals dinner. I'm gonna set up smaller recall to and that's it. And then I'm gonna return the meal type, perfect. Now, the third function we're gonna write is the create table function. So it's gonna be a function where I create a table from a bunch of lists with the respective information that I'm collecting here in this function, like date, category, time, amount, file name, etc. Okay, so. I'm just gonna copy because I have this thing on my on my right. Yeah, for those of you wondering, I am most certainly not writing this all from you know from memory or all right now. I actually already wrote my article about this topic, and so I'm using that as a reference. But I think it's more useful if, as I'm writing or at least you know recopying this uh, the content from my article, I kind of like go through it and you know do a little bit of like a demonstration. Um, all right, perfect. So this is not correct. So now I'm gonna get here the results. So what I'm gonna do here is very simple. I'm just gonna set up a data frame. And in this data frame, uh, I have, you know, date list, amount list, new type, the uh, a list with time information, category, file name, etc. There's probably like a nicer, more optimized way and you know, doing it with lists is probably not the best idea, but since we're talking about like very few, a very few number of you know, images and lists, and the size of the list is not gonna get too big, so I think that this is a pretty quick and simple way to do it. Now what I'm gonna do is just, you know, just for kicks, uh, I'm gonna set up uh, a few tests for the helper functions that I wrote. And the cool thing about using GitHub Copilot, which is what I use in this, uh, in this editor, I can write something like write code for testing. Yes. Yes, and now if I run this, oh, no, 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 got a mistake. Uh, he said invalid for for base 10. Uh, invalid for base 10 because I said true from, ah, that's true. It's all from true, thank you very much, yeah. There you go. So this is the this is a little snippet to test the function. So this is really cool because you know it's a simple way to test the function. And actually, this test was useful because it showed me that I actually had done a mistake. Since I'm kind of like copying but doing a few things from from memory, I forgot about that. But it's all good. But let me save this notebook now. Expense. All right, perfect. Now I want to write. Um, I also want to write a test for. Uh, uh, I want to write a test for the create table function, so I can say write code for testing the create 
and create table function and the magic happens which I think is really cool so now this is all being generated with github copilot yep so now I can see if that function works and he said pd is not defined so let me go up here and I didn't understand why he said PD is not defined. PD is definitely defined. So PD, PD, ta, 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 ta. PD dot data frame. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Now, as we can see, uh, the function seems to be working fine. It saves the date, the amount, new type, the time, the category, and the file name. Perfect. Now that I've done that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load, parse, and extract the data from the expense receipts. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is instantiate our MindD client using the API we obtained. And that means what? That means doing just MindD client is equal to client. Oh, is equal to client and then you will give your api key now i'm gonna skip this part where i actually use my own api key because i already instantiated this with the right api key but when you create your api key as i described in the steps before you just come back here and you put your api key right here then once you've done that we're gonna initialize some empty lists that will contain the data extracted. So that will just be a matter of, we're gonna come here, I'm gonna just yeah, copy this here. So we're gonna initialize some empty lists. Actually, I wrote wrong here, yeah, some empty lists. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load image of expense receipt and feed it to the mine the API. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an image path, which is gonna be the you know, path to your receipt. I'm gonna get a simple receipt real quick. So this is one, um, this is one sample receipt that I have in my, in my folder. So now what I'm gonna do is, the first thing is I'm gonna feed that in, that, the file path to the MindD client, and I'm gonna use the doc from path method on that image path which will parse you know after i've done that i can generate the api response by doing input doc dot parse oh the input doc dot parse yeah and then i i set up documents dot type receive v4 as you can see they have a lot of um, receipt uh, versions of the API for different types of receipts. So you, you could, you know, investigate on the official MindD documentation, the right version for you, but this one worked perfectly for me. So that's the one I'm gonna use. So finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate the, I'm gonna get the data by saying expense data equals to API response dot document. And now we can even print expense data right here. All right, so when you do that, this is what you're gonna get in, as a result. You're gonna get this receipt object, whatever version you're using. And this is what we're gonna use now uh, as an input. We're gonna use this as an input to the function that we wrote to extract the information. And from that, that, that function was written already taking in consideration what the MindD API expects you to, uh, how the MindD API expects you to get information from the API response. So now we're going to extract that information uh, from the image. And we can even print the outputs. We can even print the outputs here. So I can just print all the stuff. So this is all the data that I got from that particular image. As an example, I can open the same image that I just ran 
there on my notebook. I'm gonna be hiding some information from this receipt, but this is the receipt, so it was 32 euros, because I live in Portugal. Uh, it has the, the date, and it has the time, so it was at 23.35, so it was a dinner. The amount is correct, the time is correct, everything seems to be correct. So now I'm gonna write an if statement to get meal type when the time variable is not a none. Because sometimes, uh, very rarely, the API might not get the time of the receipt for whatever reason. Maybe you took a photo that wasn't so good. Uh, so in that case, we're just gonna set up something like this, where I say, uh, if not time, then the meal type is unknown, else meal type is convert time to meal type. And this indeed, I'm considering that all the receipts will be for, you know, the category food. This is what I would write. And then I can just print the meal type. I can, I can print meal type and I can print the time so that we see if it makes sense. So it was dinner because it was at 11.35. That makes total sense. Finally, I can append the extracted information to corresponding to the lists that I created before. So this is what I would be doing. So I would be appending all this information to these lists. And here, in the case of the amount, I am replacing dots with commas because in my specific use case, I use expense reports on Google Sheets and Google Sheets for whatever reason uh, accepts commas for floats. So I would append them to a list. And I'm only showing this because um, I'm gonna set up a for loop with the entire source code. And when I'm doing for multiple images, when I'm doing for multiple images, I append to list inside of a for loop and then I create my CSV table. I'm gonna export the results to a table. So the format of the table will be date, amount, meal type, time, category, and file name. Finally, I create my table and then I show it as a result. Perfect. Now I could wrap this into a for loop to do for all the images. So the full source code is going to be, it's going to be this. So we're gonna set up our uh, we're gonna set up our, we're gonna set up our client for accessing the Mind the API. We're gonna create our lists. We're gonna create a for loop over the expense images folder. We're gonna get all of the images inside of that folder. For each image, we're gonna uh, feed it to we're gonna feed it to the MindD client. We're gonna get an API response by parsing it with a specific type receipt uh, type receipt object. We're gonna then um, get the API response. We're gonna feed that to a function that extracts the information from the expenses data. We're gonna set up an if statement to get the right meal type from time, and then we're gonna append that to a specific list for each type of data that we're getting. Then we're gonna create a table after uh, at appending all that information. I'm gonna sort it so I have you know dinner and then lunch all separated because that matters for my specific use case. And then, we, and then I'm gonna print the result of that table. So if I run this, okay, so now I'm running with my actual API key, which I'm hiding because I have a limited amount of credits so I cannot share it on the internet. But when you create your account, you're gonna have your own API key with 250 pages that you can use, which for individual purposes, I feel like it's more than enough to create an individual expense report. And it's a great way because this way is free and we don't have to write a lot of code to do all the extraction of the image information from the receipts. And at the end, this is what I get. I get a table with organized information from all my receipts with the file name, the category of the type of receipt that we have. In this case, it was all food, the time, and then the respective meal type associated with that time, the amount of money with commas replacing uh, dots because Google Sheets and with a date for each of those um, for each of the, the for the and the dates for the general uh, and the date marking when those receipts were generated. 
Another thing that we could do is we could do a little sanity check for the data that we extracted so just to make sure that the API is working correctly. We can set up a loop where we plot a visualization of all the images of the receipts with the data that we extracted side by side so that we can you know, make sure that uh, we're extracting actual information. And we can set up a loop here saying continue so that we, you know, we, um, so we continue to generate all the information and I'm going to set up something like continue or exit to C or E. Uh, and then I'm going to say some variable is going to be continue showing and then if continue showing is equal to C. Else break. We are reading the image reading each image in the folder and then we're showing that image and in the title of that plot we're putting the information of the date, the amount, the type of meal and the time which are the main pieces of information that we care about for this project and then we're showing uh, we're showing the image. I'm also going to add a plt.access off so that I only show images and the respective titles and here I'm just saying you know whether or not I want to continue or exit the loop so that I don't show a bunch of images. Uh, which you know I won't need and then I can run this and then there we go so now uh, it shows me the receipt on the bottom and the information on top so this the date was from 10th of November of 2022 shows me the amount etc and I can uh, check with the image that the information actually makes sense so this is another example and now that I you know I'm satisfied that is all for today thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time cheers